After the end of the Second World War, European armies began to exit the Muslim world and many nations managed to achieve independence. However, this independence was simply an illusion as the Muslim world was now ruled by Western-backed kings. Therefore, the Muslim world remained economically and culturally enslaved. During this period, one of the most influential Muslims of the 20th century rose to prominence. His name was Hassan al-Banna. Hassan al-Banna challenged European hegemony and had a vision to revive the glorious Islamic Caliphate by uniting Muslims all over the world. In 1928, Hassan al-Banna established a revolutionary organization in order to reform the political, economic and social life of the Muslim world, which was still recovering from the effects of colonialism. Hassan al-Banna's popularity grew rapidly, and by the end of World War II, his organization had around 20 million members from all around the Islamic world. Hassan al-Banna's influence became a huge problem for the British and their interests in the Middle East, which is why he was assassinated in 1949. Hassan al-Banna was born in the year 1906 into a religious family in the Egyptian village of Mahmoudiyah. During his childhood, Hassan al-Banna witnessed the collapse of the Ottoman Empire and the British occupation of Egypt. From a young age, he was determined to fight the British and kick them out of the Muslim world. Egypt was flooded with Western immorality and the streets were filled with British soldiers. The British exploited Egypt's resources. The people of Egypt were left marginalized and poverty was widespread. In the year 1919, the people of Egypt took to the streets and began a massive revolution. Many British soldiers were killed by angry Egyptians who demanded independence. The young Hassan al-Banna took part in these protests and began his mission to remove British influence from Egypt. As a result of these protests, Egypt was granted independence. However, this independence was an illusion as the British puppet named Fuad Ahmed Pasha became the king of Egypt. Fuad Pasha granted huge concessions to the British and British troops still remained in Egypt. At the age of 13, Hassan al-Banna joined the Hasafiya Sufi order which was a politically active religious group that aimed to preserve the Islamic morality in society and stand up against the impact of Christian missionaries in Egypt. In 1923, Hassan al-Banna moved to the city of Cairo in order to complete his studies. Hassan al-Banna was shocked by the new Western lifestyle he encountered in Cairo. For the first time, Al-Banna witnessed the negative social impacts of British colonialism. The city of Cairo was filled with gambling, materialism, prostitution and promiscuity. Hassan Al-Banna was outraged by this attack on Islamic values. During this period, agents of the British were working hard to spread Western propaganda in order to weaken the social structure of Muslim society so that the British could easily maintain their grip over Egypt. In 
Atheists, liberal organizations, magazines, books and newspapers were working hard to promote secular ideas which weakened the influence of religion in the public life. Hassan al-Banna began preaching to the youth in local mosques. However, due to low attendance in mosques, al-Banna began preaching in places such as coffee shops. Hassan al-Banna focused on preaching to the youth of Egypt. He stated the following, In every society, it is the youth who are the pillars of its renaissance. They are its strength in every revolution and they carry the banners of every idea. Hassan al-Banna also started to preach his ideas to poor Muslim workers, small merchants and civil servants. The Muslim Brotherhood brought electricity to smaller villages and created health clinics, schools, orphanages and youth clubs. By 1932, the Muslim Brotherhood had a branch in every major city in Egypt. Because of the huge British military presence in Egypt, Hassan al-Banna also created a military branch of the Muslim Brotherhood. This branch was a secret organization which was hidden from the government and was designed to defend Muslims against British occupation forces. By the year 1936, the situation in Egypt had improved when King Farouk rose to power. However, although King Farouk made various constitutional reforms and reduced the number of British troops in Egypt, he allowed British troops and companies to operate around the Suez Canal. The Suez Canal was the most important strategic asset for the British in Egypt. The Suez Canal was a shipping port that allowed the British to have quick access to India. Hassan al-Banna called for the full withdrawal of British troops and called for the nationalization of the Suez Canal. Hassan al-Banna traveled to various villages located near the Suez Canal and was outraged by the poverty and marginalization of the native people. After visiting the village of Ismailiya, which was located near the Suez Canal, Hassan al-Banna recorded his immediate shock at the disparity he witnessed between the lifestyles of the native population and the French and British administrators of the Suez Canal Company. The foreigners lived in luxury homes in a special neighborhood. This contrasted with the poor and small houses of the Egyptians. Even the street signs of the city were written in English. Although foreign troops were now only present in the Suez Canal area, Western customs and laws were present all across Egypt and had penetrated every aspect of society. Hassan al-Banna was also critical of the British-based educational system, which he felt produced people devoid of a sense of their cultural and religious identity. Furthermore, Hassan al-Banna and the Muslim Brotherhood completely boycotted non-Islamic courts, judicial systems and also disassociated themselves from government organizations, newspapers, committees, schools and other institutions which were a product of British colonialism. Instead, Hassan al-Banna and the Muslim Brotherhood established their own institutions. In a speech to his followers, Al-Banna stated the following, O oh brothers, are you prepared to starve so that people may be satiated, and to stay up so that people may sleep, 
and to tire that people may rest and finally to die so that your ummah may live that is how you become truly truthful with Allah under the guidance of Hasan al-Banna the Muslim Brotherhood gradually established contacts with influential figures in Egyptian government and Egyptian society The Muslim Brotherhood managed to gain the support of thousands of Egyptians, mainly from the middle class, and was successful in building an effective network. Through mass demonstrations, organized rallies and meetings, the Brotherhood evolved into a political pressure movement. Eventually, the Muslim Brotherhood became feared by the government and the British. This is because Hassan al-Banna's influence was not limited to Egypt and he became an enemy of British colonialism all around the Muslim world. Hassan al-Banna was an opponent of nationalism and wanted to revive the Islamic Caliphate. He believed that reviving the Caliphate was the only real way of preventing Muslim lands from being colonized and enslaved by the West. Al-Banna also received the support of influential Islamic scholars such as Rashid Rida and Muhibbuddin Al-Khatib. These scholars had very strong links to several Arab movements in Syria and the Arabian Peninsula and contributed to exporting the ideology of the Muslim Brotherhood. Hassan Al-Banna also had followers from Turkey, Iran and the Indian subcontinent. In fact, Hassan al-Banna built the foundations and paved the way for Islamic thinkers such as Abu al-Ala Maududi in India and Rahullah Khomeini in Iran. Hassan al-Banna was also an opponent of Zionism and the British occupation of Palestine. Al-Banna sent thousands of volunteers to Palestine and provided aid, food, shelter, education and weapons to Palestinians who had been displaced. During the Arab-Israeli War of 1948, Hassan al-Banna sent 1,500 volunteer fighters to Palestine. However, these fighters were independent from the Egyptian army. The Egyptian government refused to integrate these Muslim Brotherhood fighters into the army because the government feared that the group would exploit the situation by obtaining arms, ammunition and training and would then try to overthrow the ruling regime in Egypt. In 1948, the Egyptian government discovered a large quantity of weapons which had been stockpiled by the Muslim Brotherhood. Therefore, the Muslim Brotherhood was accused by the government of planning a revolution. Tensions between the Muslim Brotherhood and the government increased and in 1948, the Muslim Brotherhood assassinated the Prime Minister Muhammad Nukrashi, who had placed an official ban on the Muslim Brotherhood. Hassan al-Banna was assassinated a year later in 1949. <laughs> 
لمن بنا إنه البن حسن أسس الدعوة يقينا رغم أسراب المحن قدم الروح شهيدا مخلصا بلا ثمن أسس الدعوة يقينا رغم أسراب المحن قدم الروح شهيدا مخلصا بلا ثمن لا تسل من بنا إنه البن حسن لا تسل من بنا إنه البن حسن إن للأخوان صرح كل ما فيه حسن لا تسل من بناه إنه البن حسن إن للأخوان صرح كل ما فيه حسن لا تسل من بناه إنه البن حسن لا تسل من بنا إنه البن